Hello friends, welcome again to this channel and today we will discuss effective modulus of subgrade reaction which is a commonly used parameter in the design of rigid pavements. The modulus of subgrade reaction is the reaction pressure per unit deflection of the foundation as determined by plate load test under a rigid plate of standard diameter measured at a specified pressure or settlement. Now IRC specifies that the K value should be measured at 1.25 millimeter settlement. So we note down the pressure at which the plate will yield a settlement of 1.25 millimeter. It is used as a primary input for rigid pavement design. It estimates the support of the layer below a rigid PCC slab. It is also used in Westergaard's equations to determine the radius of relative stiffness of a slab, which is a prime variable in all equations of calculating the stresses in a concrete pavement. The K value can be determined by field test or by correlating with other tests, but there is no direct laboratory procedure for determining K value. Now, since this is a pressure per unit deflection, unit of K is either kilogram per centimeter cube or MPA per meter, or it can be pounds per cubic inch, PCI. The typical value of K ranges from about 13.5 MPA per meter for a weak support to more than 270 MPA per meter for a strong support. Typically, the modulus of subgrade reaction is estimated from other strength or stiffness test. However, in situ values can be measured using plate bearing test and this procedure is covered in IS 9214 of 1974. Now in plate load test, we need bearing plates of different sizes, starting with 75 centimeter diameter, then 60, then 45, and then finally 30 centimeter diameter. We need a loading arrangement, loads applied through a hydraulic jack, which works against a reaction frame. Here is a reaction frame and the loading attachment should have a capacity of at least 150 kilo Newton and reaction to load can be obtained by attaching this load device either to a tractor or a truck or maybe a truss. A load cell is used to measure the load which is applied and three dial gauges are used to measure the settlement and these three dial gauges are spaced 120 degree apart and these should be supported by an independent datum bar. A seating load giving a pressure of 7 kPa is applied and then it is released after a few seconds and for a 75 centimeter diameter plate, this load is 310 kg. Now, once you apply this seating load, after that, set the three deformation dial gauges to zero, apply a load sufficient to cause a settlement of about 0.25 millimeter and wait till the settlement in the plate is stabilized or is less than 0.25 millimeter per minute. Note the readings in three dial gauges and corresponding load in hydraulic pressure dial gauge or proving ring dial gauge. Now increase the load to cause additional settlement of 0.25 millimeter and then again note the deflection and load when there is no perceptible increase in settlement. That means settlement or the reading of these three dial gauges have stabilized. Repeat the above procedure until a total settlement is not less than 1.75 millimeter. And then we draw a curve between applied pressure and resulting settlement. Ideally, this, load, this curve should be a straight line because we assume that the soil is elastic in nature. 
but actually the soil is not elastic and therefore it has some convexity upward and we find out the load or pressure corresponding to 1.25 millimeter settlement and then we calculate the value of k using this equation that pressure upon 0 0.125 in kg per centimeter cube if you are taking here the pressure in mpa then it will be in mpa per meter now the k value which is obtained from plate load test is corrected for three parameters the model of subgrade reaction is highly dependent on moisture content of the subgrade soil at the time of test and therefore as in case of cbr the ideal period for conducting the test is doing or soon after the monsoon in case the plate load test is conducted at some other period it should be corrected for moisture content and this correction can be approximately taken equal to the change in cbr value of a sample compacted at field density and moisture content when tested before and after saturation the second correction is for plate size the standard procedure is to conduct the test using a plate of 750 millimeter diameter but when adequate reaction is not available in the field then a smaller plate can also be used and in that case the k value should be corrected using this equation where k750 is the k value corresponding to 750 millimeter diameter plate and kd is the k value which should determine corresponding to d meter diameter of the plate now remember here d is in meter for bending of the plate when you are stacking plates one over the other 75 centimeter then 60 centimeter then 45 centimeter 13 centimeter maybe 15 centimeter also then the chances of bending are reduced but still there is some bending in the plate and therefore a method for correction of models of subgrade for plate bending is as given in this figure that you enter a value uncorrected value of k which you obtain from the field and you read on the x-axis the corrected value which takes care of bending of the plate now this plate load test is quite time consuming and also what is seen that it does not simulate the service conditions and therefore in many of the studies it has been correlated with other simpler tests like cbr or resin modulus or even some soil properties of the foundation soil now this table is taken from astro for fine grain soil with predominating particles of silt and clay size it provides low support to the pavement and therefore k value is in the range of 20 to 32 mpa per minute per meter for sands and sand gravel mixtures with moderate amount of silt and clay it is 35 to 46 mpa per meter and for cement treated base which provides a very good support to the pavement its value can be as high as 110 mpa per meter irc 58 2015 correlate k value with soft cbr of subgrade and it gives this table that depending upon the soaked CBR, which is, which is determined on remolded samples in laboratory, you can find out corresponding value of K for design of payments. Now the point of discussion in today's lecture is how to determine effective K value for subgrade. If the CBR of the 500 millimeter thick compacted subgrade is significantly larger than that of the amendment below the effective cbr of the subgrade should be estimated and the background of the procedure is same as in the case of design of flexible payment to determine the effective cbr when the material in amendment below the subgrade has different cbr than that of the subgrade soil and for this you can watch the video on design of flexible payment for use of iit pave to determine the effective cbr now what IRC suggests that effective K value for subgrade can be determined from these charts. 
And if you take one example, that CBR value of subgrade soil is 20% and CBR of top layer of amendment is 6%, then you enter this chart from CBR value of 500 millimeter thick subgrade is 20% and appropriately choose this curve that is for CBR of soil below 500 millimeter thick subgrade. In this example case, it is 6%. So we take between five and seven, and from this, you move horizontally and read the effective subgrade CBR value, that is 14.5%. Now, once you know the effective CBR, then you can find out what is the K value using the same table as I displayed earlier also. Now, this effective K value, which you calculated, is affected by three more parameters that is sub-base type and sub-base thickness, depth to rigid foundation, and loss of support. Sub-base material and sub-base thickness both will influence the effective K value of subgrade reaction. And therefore, it is important to know what material is being used and what is the thickness of the layer. Then second, Correction is depth to rigid foundation. If bedrock is within 10 feet of the surface of the subgrade, for any significant length of project, its effect on overall K must be considered. And the third parameter is loss of support, which can be because of erosion of the subgrade. So that will also change the type of the, the support provided by the base to the slab. Astro guide is available to apply these three corrections to effective K value of subgrade reaction. The first one, when subbase is provided above subgrade. When subbase exists between the slab and the subgrade, the composite modulus of subgrade reaction K infinite should be estimated. And this is estimated using this chart. And this chart assumes that a semi-infinite subgrade depth that is more than 10 feet below the surface of the subgrade exists. And that is why the value which we obtain from this chart is called K infinite. So if you take an example, let us say the subbase thickness is 6 inch, the modulus value of subbase is 20,000 psi, and MR value of soil subgrade is 7000 psi then we enter this chart from this subbase thickness dsb in 6 inch and simultaneously we enter this chart from again same thickness to the road soil resident modulus so these are the charts for mr value and these are the charts for elastic modulus of subbase material so you get to a point here, you get a point here. Now from this point, you move horizontally on this turning line. And from this point, you draw a line perpendicular. And from this point, you draw a horizontal line. And intersecting point here will give you the composite modulus of subgrade reaction that is K infinite. So for this example problem, it is 400 PCI. The Earlier chart assumes that rigid foundation is beyond 10 feet depth. But if rigid foundation lies below subgrade at less than 10 feet depth, then the K value must be modified. And this is used, this chart is used to get the effective K value for rigid foundation. So again, we take example, MR value of road bare soil is 4000 PSI and the depth of foundation, rigid foundation is 5 feet from the surface of the subgrade. And K infinite value which we, which we estimated from earlier curve is 230 PSI. So here we start from this horizontal line that is road bed soil rigid modulus that is MR value of 4000 corresponding to 4000 and corresponding to DSG equal to 5 feet we draw a horizontal line here and this is the, these are the charts, these are the lines for K infinite values. 
So k infinite value is 230. So let us say this is the point here. And from this point, you move vertically down to read the models of subgrade reaction on this axis. So value is here 300 PCI. That is how it is used. The third correction is for loss of support. And this is to account for the potential loss of support by foundation erosion or due to differential vertical soil movement. And therefore, the K value, which is estimated from earlier chart, must be corrected for loss of support. And we again take example that K value for full support is 540 PCI. And if you assume that there is some loss of support, So you enter from this axis corresponding to 540 PCI and let us say loss, loss of support is 1, then you get a value of 170 PCI. That is the final value of K. This is called effective K value. Now this loss of support will depend upon the type of material. And these are the typical ranges of loss of support for different materials as given in Astro guide. For cement treated granular base, having MR value of 1 to 2 10 to the power 6 PSI, this can be taken as 0 to 1. And similarly for other layers, for fine grain or natural subgrade material, where MR value is 3000 to 40,000 PSI, this loss of support can be taken maximum that is 2 to 3. Now IRC 58 does not consider all these parameters while calculating K value. It gives a simple table to calculate effective K value for different combinations of subgrade and subbase material, untreated granular or cement treated granular base. And it can be estimated from this table. It says if K value of subgrade and effective K value of untreated granular subbase of thickness 150, 225, and 300. And this is the table for effective K value of cement treated subbase of different thicknesses. And if you are providing DLC subbase, then the table. So DLC of 100 millimeter thickness or 150 millimeter thickness will give you a different value of effective subgrade reaction. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your comments and questions in the comment box. Have a nice day.